Hello everyone, welcome to another webinar by Royal Cyber. My name is Mir Mustafa Ali Pasha. I'll be your host and one of the speakers for today. Some ground rules for a smoother experience before we begin. If you have trouble seeing our screen or hearing us, please notify in the chat window located on the right side of your screen. You can post your questions and comments in the chat box anytime during the presentation. There will be a dedicated slot for Q&A at the end of the session where your questions will be answered. You can also post your questions or requests and for any follow-up information on the email ID shown here which will also be shared at the end of the session. So in the next 45 minutes, we will discuss how to take your containerization strategy to next level using MuleSoft's AnyPoint Runtime Fabric offering. So that's me on the left side. I manage middleware and integrations practice at Royal Cyber, focused on helping our customers get the best ROI on their digital transformation journey. On the right side is my colleague, Mr. Haider Raza, who is a certified MuleSoft solution architect at Royal Cyber. He has tremendous experience in architecting, designing and implementing MuleSoft based projects, especially on RTF for our customers across the globe. And here is a quick look at the agenda for today. We'll first off quick intro about Royal Cyber and who we are. And then we'll get into the topic of what is containerization as a strategy, what are the core capabilities of RTF and what are the management options available in it, how is security managed within RTF, what are its limitations and so on. And we'll also talk about a quick success story we have had and um, a demo right to see uh, RTF in action finally we'll open the forum for Q&A so Royal Cyber is a mid-sized fast-growing IT consulting and digital transformation company specializing in services solutions and software we have more than 1500 um, consultants across the globe our headquarters is in Naperville Illinois USA and we have a global presence with offices in Canada, UK, Australia, and the Middle East. We also have multiple offshore development centers in India. Our strategic partnership with a lot of technology companies on the globe, such as MuleSoft, uh, Salesforce, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, and others, coupled with uh, business agility and follow the sun delivery model, makes Royal Cyber an obvious choice for a lot of our customers globally. We provide reliable and high performing solutions and services on all the areas listed here, such as APIs and integrations, middleware, cloud, commerce, big data, automation, data science, RPA, to name a few. Now let's get into the topic, right? So what is containerization as a strategy? Now let me ask you this. What do you think containerization strategy is important to your business organization? Now what would happen if you don't embark on the journey. Now let us know what you think in the chat box below. Now generally, what we have seen is that containerizing your applications makes business operations simple, flexible, and more importantly, makes your business scalable. Now digital transformation enablers like multi-cloud, decentralization, and container adoption in itself can empower innovation and offer a better customer experience so what is a container most of you must be familiar with this picture on the screen those enormous colorful boxes you see piled up uh, at every shipyard or on the ship on the planet nowadays the analogy of a shipping containers to a software container is very popular so containers in our context are lightweight software components that bundle the application its dependencies and its configurations in a single image running in an isolated user environment on a traditional operating system on a traditional server or in a virtualized environment or a cloud infrastructure of your choice now containers are a solution to the problem of how to get your software up and running reliably when moved from one computing environment to another so now to understand this concept better, we need to address the following key questions, right? What is a high level containerization strategy? 
Now, what are some of the key elements um, of the strategy, right? So, and what is the ideal candidate to start your containerization journey and why? Finally, why is this strategy so important to your business? So, what is a high level containerization strategy, right? Containerization, as we said, is part of a plan for digital transformation of the enterprise to make sure we work with future proofed architectures, right, to help accelerate growth and innovation faster. A containerization strategy is comprised of best practices and opera operational plans that help drive digital transformation by accelerating application development, testing, and deployment. Now, this approach enables decoupling of applications from the underlying infrastructure right and thus improves your business agility application security and your operating environment so what goes into deployment of a container strategy right so what are those key elements for you for the strategy now there are six key elements of every containerization or deployment number one is application selection so prioritize based on application attributes such as age frequency of updates state or stateless and impact on the organization's bottom line number two is governance right so ensure people and processes are in place to secure support and educate your stakeholders on containerization practices the third is platform of course right so whether or not application is being refactored containers will impact server and infrastructure utilization containerizing can be a prelude, prelude to cloud migration for many applications number four is automation right creating a ci cd pipeline if it is not already in place or adoption of a ci cd uh, best practices uh, with containers ability to roll out new code seamlessly Number five is orchestration, right? Much of the magic in containers is orchestration, as you know. In automation tools like Kubernetes, which roll out containerized applications and scale instances up and down are needed. Number six is continual evaluation, right? So as new applications enter the scene and businesses need to evolve, organizations may need to reprioritize which applications to containerize next. Okay, so now, Let's see which is the ideal candidate to start your containerization journey. Most industry experts agree that it is the integration layer. Okay, and here's why. Although containers are increasingly uh, being used for a broad range of applications, the ephemeral nature of these containers lends itself best to those applications that are number one, stateless, and number two, independent. Stateless in the sense it has all the information needed to process with the request right and that ensues independence of operation right so independence required to run efficiently without much dependency on other aspects now this is important because it ensures one application cannot interfere with another so the ideal candidate in our case is your integration layer so now let's look at why this strategy is so significant to your business again right so containerization of applications brings so many benefits, including portability, which means uh, portability between your different platforms and clouds. Uh, it's truly write once and run anywhere, right? That is the whole intent uh, of reusability and portability. Efficiency, right? Through using far fewer resources than your virtual machines and delivering higher utilization of your compute resources. Agility, right? That allows your developers to integrate with their existing, uh, for instance, DevOps environment and quicker time to market that enables you uh, the ideas uh, to go to market quickly due to the higher speed in the delivery of enhancements uh, resulting in an increased revenue as well as customers and employee satisfaction right security of course improved security by isolating your applications from the host system and from each other as well faster application startups and ability to scale quickly and easily right flexibility to work on a virtualized infrastructure or on a bare metal server and also horizontal and vertical scaling we just talked about easier management right um, since install upgrade and rollback processes are cumbersome but they're built into the platform so it, it makes it so easy 
finally isolation so you get application isolation in terms of dedicated cpu memory and desk and all of this put together makes your business so agile that you can take an idea and go to market with it in a very short time uh, not just that you should be able to scale on top of that idea to bring to, to add more services to your customers so let's look at how does muse of address this challenge muse of any point runtime fabric is the solution to your containerization challenges for the middleware infrastructure any point runtime fabric is a container service that automates the deployment and orchestration of mule applications and api gateways you can run your mule applications on kubernetes and get the benefits of containerization such as isolation horizontal scaling and auto redeploy by default it allows you to run your mule applications composite apis and your api gateways across any environment with centralized management using any point platform you can also move your deployments in a few clicks you can pivot your deployments between cloud hub private cloud or your data center with very minimal or no impact so runtime fabric and its underlying components run as kubernetes deployment objects be it eks aks or gke right cloud providers of your platform or even at openshift environments you can manage the objects via any point platform linux based operating systems are required for all the nodes that run the runtime fabric components within the kubernetes cluster so the runtime fabric agent is deployed as a pod in the cluster and that communicates with the control plane via mutual tls outbound connection established at the startup so the agent is event driven right so when the application state changes a kubernetes event is generated the agent sends metadata describing the current state of the application to the control plane right the agent also listens for incoming requests from the control plane when the agent receives a message from the plane it makes changes to the kubernetes resources specified in the message okay the changes can be something like creating a new application or updating an existing app or even deleting an application now what are the, some of the core capabilities or features of your rtf number 1 isolation so it provides isolation between applications by running them as a separate mule runtime server right per application i one runtime per application right auto scaling so scaling application across multiple replicas it in fact leverages the um, scalability features of the cloud platform we'll see in, in few moments automated application failover which means high availability across all your applications application management using seamlessly managing your application using any point runtime manager and ability to run multiple versions of your mule runtime server on the same set of resources monitoring right so application and api gateways deployed to rtf include native support for any point monitoring the monitoring feature that comes with any point platform subscription to allow viewing the metrics with the platform so it also offers you a cli feature that is which is more popular nowadays to manage your rtf rtf ctl is the command line tool which can be used for your purpose <laughs> now rtf works on a shared responsibility model right so here are some of the things you need to know there are a few things that muse of manages when it comes to your rtf but there are a few other things that you need to manage yourself as a customer right muse of will manage the runtime fabric fully and will be responsible for any activity related to such as the upgrades fixes dependencies of rtf agents and the runtime engine running within it right what about your responsibility as a customer customers are responsible for everything related to hosting the rtf in your environment be it on prem or cloud from provisioning configuring and or managing your infrastructure which includes your vm resources um, disk capacity so on and so forth right so your dev devops your network and security teams need to work 
closely together to stand up the environment that complies with your security policies before you start to deploy RTF solution on top of it. Now let's see how running Mule applications on RTF is different from running them on Cloud Hub or on Mule runtimes running on prem. Right, so as shown here um, on this table, right, so Cloud Hub is MuleSoft's managed public cloud um, offering. It has a control plane where um, the design management elements are hosted and a runtime plane where customers can deploy their applications, right? It also takes care of your rolling upgrades, uh, high availability across different data centers within a region and a bunch of other such activities, wholly managed by MuleSoft, right? Now for customers who are, uh, do not want to be on cloud completely, right? MuleSoft also allows them uh, to deploy the runtime in their own infrastructure, right, within your own premises, but the control plane still resides on the cloud, which shouldn't be a problem, right? So data is still not exposed uh, to the cloud there. So you get one uh, Mule runtime per server, where you can uh, install your application, Mule APIs. The runtimes can be controlled from your um, control plane, which is sitting on the cloud hub, but the servers need to be managed by the individual customer right yourself so this is more of a do-it-yourself approach a diy approach which gives a, a sort of better control over the infrastructure to some extent however the flip side is upgrading the runtimes upgrading the server infrastructure and all of that is a significant effort uh, and one resource intensive app can affect other applications running on the same runtime so you uh, that's the uh, risk with, with this approach so when it comes to rta Right. It provides Docker and Kubernetes based deployment model of your runtime plane. Okay, you, it can be hosted on a third party uh, IaaS solution like Azure, AWS GCP or in your own customer's data center. It requires use of a control plane still which is hosted on the Cloud Hub. So the runtime plane is either running as an appliance right, or which is managed by Microsoft or as a service. Um, both of which are actually managed by Muse, but you have to take care of the infrastructure when it comes to running it on the cloud. Uh, there are multiple options to manage RTF, which we will see shortly. Right. So additionally, when you deploy on AWS, GCP, Azure, or at OpenShift, you can provision these servers across different availability zones or AZs within a region and within your own network. So this means you get high availability across um, the AZs out of the box. Now, why is RTF better than the hybrid model, the on-prem um, mule runtimes managed by your infra team, right? See, RTF is the uh, de facto choice for customers who are deploying or who wants to deploy their mule runtimes on-prem. As you can see, when it comes to um, isolation between apps, RTF is more reliable. And... Um, uh, than running your apps on naked mule runtimes, right? RTF also supports horizontal scaling, uh, registering your apps with the control plane on Cloud Hub, and it also guarantees zero downtime for your applications during redeployments out of the box. Whereas you need to do a lot of these activities yourself manually with the traditional on prem approach. Now, let's talk about the multiple management options offered by runtime fabric one is uh, a version that runs on uh, bare metal uh, or vms right um, and the other is something that runs on a self-managed kubernetes or bring your own kubernetes model so the rtf on vm or bare metal is, is an option where muse provides the required software infrastructure components including docker and kubernetes okay your it admin is responsible for installing this version on the vms that you operate and manage whereas the the, the option the other option is uh, self-managed kubernetes where you install it on an existing kubernetes environment that your it admin already operates and manages this version supports amazon's eks elastic kubernetes service azure's kubernetes service aks from microsoft and gke right? google kubernetes engine offering from google so let's talk about what the setup looks like okay so this diagram on the left shows uh, this setup of a typical RTF appliance that runs on 
um, on a bare metal VM, right? So here we have a breakup of the controllers or the masters and the slave uh, nodes or the workers, right? The controllers are dedicated servers or virtual machines which handle all the orchestration and the management. Now for a protection setup, it's important to keep them dedicated right so that their related services are never fighting for resources we recommend running a minimum of three of these to ensure they're highly available right for a non-production scenario um, um even a single node is sufficient but if you have more than six worker nodes at the bottom it's better to add additional masters or controllers on the bottom half we have the nodes which are primarily reserved to control to run your mule run times and run your apis okay for this we would obviously recommend a minimum of three for high availability the total number will actually depend on the number of mule run times and the cpu memory for your vm um, that you provision so that's runtime appliance uh, rtf running on an running as an appliance for you the next is runtime fabric uh, running on self-managed kubernetes now this requires a dedicated cluster Okay, that's provision and operational as shown in the picture uh, on the right side here. Okay, now this blue box uh, represents services which are provided and managed by MuleSoft, right? That which includes your RTF agents, um, uh, Mule runtime engines, and other uh, dependencies which are used to deploy your Mule applications. The RTF agent deploys and manages your Mule applications by generating and updating Kubernetes resources such as deployments, pods, replica sets, and ingress resources. The yellow box at the bottom represents um, services that should be managed by you, the customer, right? So you're responsible for provisioning, configuring, and managing the Kubernetes cluster used for any point on time fabric on your self-managed Kubernetes. Additional config um, are required to set up or enable the other capabilities of Kubernetes are also your responsibility, such as ingress controllers, external load balancers, log forwarding, monitoring, uh, opening network ports and NAT gateways and proxies, uh, host runtime and networking, so on and so forth. Now, what are the features supported by each of these options, right? So there are some difference in the way these, uh, some of the features are supported. Uh, support for deploying mules and your API gateways are supported on both the uh, flavors. Kubernetes and Docker, they're only available on your self man. Uh, they're not included, in fact, right? So they are uh, available on your um, appliance, but on the self-managed Kubernetes, you need to provision your instance via your Amazon AKS, Azure AKS, Amazon EKS, Azure AKS, or even the Google GK clusters. When it comes to installation on any distri Linux distribution that's supported um, on on any on the self-managed version, whereas on bare metal and VMs, only Red Hat Enterprise Linux and CentOS are supported at the moment. Node auto scaling. Now the self-managed Kubernetes flavor leverages the um, functionality offered by the cloud platform itself. Whereas this is not available out of the box on your appliance. External log forwarding, you want to log forward your logs to external uh, uh, logging application, you can, that is available uh, out of the box in, in the appliance, but you must provide an external log forwarding service when it comes to the self managed Kubernetes. Internal load balancer, again, uh, you must provide an internal load balancer, but this is, this is included out of the box on the appliance. Uh, any point security edge uh, yeah, that's not supported on the uh, self-managed Kubernetes. We'll talk about it shortly, but that comes out of the box on the appliance. Um, same, another, another security feature or tokenization that's not supported again on the self-managed Kubernetes, and, but that is supported on the appliance. Uh, Ops center, um, again, that's supported on the appliance version, but not on the um, on the self-managed Kubernetes, which for obvious reasons, you can enable your monitoring and alerting using the features offered by your cloud provider. Now, let's see how uh, security is handled within RTF. So the security features 
for appliance and the self-managed Kubernetes options are different. That's something we need to know right off the bat, right? So appliance comes with an add-on security um, a feature called AnyPoint Security for Edge, which is a high performance, reliable, and a scalable service that works with AnyPoint Runtime Fabric to enforce security policies on nodes deployed to your RTO. The AnyPoint Security provides important features such as denial of service, IP whitelisting, HTTP limit policy, uh, web application, firewall, um, etc. to protect your APIs. Now you can use these policies to uh, manage all traffic to your RTF and leverage the API manager policies to uh, apply specific behavior to specific API. Now remember, these are all specific to the appliance, right? Any point security policies uh, then act as a default router capability through which all your traffic traverses. Now since any point security is not available um, on the self-managed Kubernetes, you can still fortify your defenses there by adding extra layer of security um, like WAF, Web Application Firewalls and Application Load Balancers or Shield uh, in case of EKS on top of your ALB as shown in this sample reference architecture diagram. So you can see all the agents and ingress controllers here on this uh, diagram here, right? And these are uh, worker nodes. So now we know what is RTF, what are the different options uh, that it has to offer. Let's look at some of the benefits, right? Uh, number one, it, it helps you get started quickly, right? With a very low barrier. It supports multi and hybrid uh, cloud options. Uh, customers often have uh, complex compliance regulations that require them to deploy applications to an isolated network. We spoke, we talked about this a while ago, right? The concept of RTF encapsulates the config for securing for secure connectivity from yourself to your on-prem or other cloud environments it helps you orchestrate and automate the deployment of your nodes on your infrastructure right you can install it on any cloud platform of your choice or on your own data center it operates consistently on each of them that's number one number two it you can leverage lightweight container based solution so with, with a kubernetes based architecture Every single application is deployed as a lightweight container that can scale up and down easily. Replicas of the application are deployed across different worker nodes and often different AZs providing your redundancy and reliability requirements, right? So the UI driven workflow abstracts out the Kubernetes packaging and deployment aspects, thereby reducing your time and cost. Finally, uh, it also helps you streamline your operations, right? For instance, you have the option of configuring ingress load balances of your choice. Now this reduces the management overhead of having to configure and manage ELB. Now that's not all. There are some other benefits that are listed on the right side of the screen. You can, you have the ability to run multiple versions. We, we talked about it. Scalability is available. You can deploy your mules with no down, downtime and this is all managed and supported by MuleSoft. So where does RTF really fit in, right? So without any doubt, uh, we have understood it's best suited for uh, those customers who want to deploy your runtimes on their own premises for multiple reasons, right? Um, but let's get into it. So it's a number one, it's a good fit for those customers with existing cloud infrastructure, right? So there is a customer who has either AWS or Azure instance, you can leverage your RTF on this infrastructure, right? In some case using uh, the hybrid cloud model as well. So for existing customers, RTF strategy removes the pain from managing several new applications on-prem. So it's also excellent for enterprises who have ongoing Kubernetes or containerization initiatives. So RTF is built on Kubernetes and it is attractive to those customers that have Kubernetes initiatives within their organization. It's also ideal for those who are in need of isolation and automation, the core to the containerization strategy, right? So current on-prem deployments are requiring dedicated teams to monitor and orchestrate deployments. Now RTF will take the pain out of it, right? So it, it automates, upgrades, increases scalability, like one app per runtime or multiple apps per runtime. Last but not the least, it's also well suited for highly restricted industries, right? There are some customers, uh, customer industries such as finance and government uh, who want managed 
cloud benefits but can only deploy on prem right or want an alternative to deploying on aws for instance a retail customers right? they cannot use aws due to obvious reasons but they do have credits from aws that they want to use for their uh, uh, purpose so or even other cloud providers and they have internal deployment uh, standardizations that they must follow so this is also highly suited for uh, restricted industries so we have spoken at length about rtf now let's look at some of the uh, requirements minimum requirements for subscribing to it right number one uh, you need to have a platinum subscription of any point platform or above right uh, you get ha and failover out of the box you also need to purchase the course separately depending on your um, use case and the growth map um, growth roadmap right customers can decide how many license course to use for rtf out of your overall um, core bucket and um, the minimum hardware requirements in fact different uh, based on uh, different use cases and your license requirements per se right now let's talk about the sizing which is a, a, a good topic of discussion we can talk about at length on sizing but we'll focus on very uh, few factors which are critical to the discussion right number one uh, when to use small fractional course right obvious reasons you would love to use fractional course uh, but what is the ideal time or when is it uh, suited right smaller fractional cores are good only for lightweight APIs right with sub 10 um, sub 10 TPS okay non time sensitive workloads that do not require to complete a task within a certain amount of time right so non time sensitive and um, and workloads where longer startup times are still acceptable right it takes time to deploy more than five minutes yeah if you can yeah so then you can give smaller fractional cores what about sizing now that's a, a good question right so sizing should be in fact be tested by customer there's no one size fits all okay it needs to be tested uh, by the customer uh, and their um, architect teams it needs to be reviewed and revisited based on their own baselines and, and the roadmap that they have and how many replicas are required per app to achieve ha right this is uh, another question that keeps coming up we recommend a minimum of two replicas per application right if you, to achieve the bare minimum ha capability you're looking at all right let's talk about limitations um, every solution has its own limitation let's find out what they are for runtime fabric so everything you see on this slide are not supported by uh, runtime fabric as of today right there might be some which might be addressed by MuleSoft uh, in the future but as of today um, right some of these are not supported pks right rtf does not support pivotal container services you cannot run a uh, non mule applications inside uh, rtf uh, you cannot provide new soft containerized images to your customers you're not allowed to edit uh, your images um, and uh, object stores right uh, persistent object store is not supported yet uh, for if you need to use you have to you go with persistence persistent gateway feature right insight and replay i mean they, they support uh, ops center for basic monitoring and alerting and any point monitoring for basic metrics advanced metrics for titanium customers only right and logging uh, available for titanium customers uh, persistence queues or any point mq on prem are not supported at the moment but you can still use a, your favorite mq uh, that you're using uh, direct uploading of applications to rtf is not supported okay so you it requires apps to be first hosted in exchange and the ui does this behind the scenes of pulling the the api from the exchange uh, over to the rtf uh, appliance or the rtf environment and right? that also requires a exchange contributor role. let's talk about a, a success story where we have um, successfully implemented um, rtf right and the customer has seen benefits on that so this is a, a customer based out of florida uh, usa uh, they are number one va lender uh, number one fha lender top residential uh, lender inside the mortgage finance industry uh, within usa they help their customers buy or finance a home regardless of your unique circumstances so what is the challenge right? they were running all the apis on cloud hub uh, they have an enterprise-wide strategy to adopt containerization uh, right within their uh, infrastructure uh, to support their digital transformation initiatives right integration layer was highly recommended to be containerized because of its stateless nature 
uh, internally and externally accessible APIs were running in environments in different business groups, which made it difficult for them to migrate their APIs to higher environments. Right? So in a sense, they wanted to migrate from Cloud Hub to RTF to realize their containerization objective. So what did we do, right? As a solution, we analyzed the functional tech requirements, uh, uh, all right? And, and we proposed to configure and set up an RTF environment on self-managed Kubernetes. Um, we set up a new EKS clusters for non-prod and fraud using Terraform. Um, all the environments are now in the same business group, which makes it easy for APIs to be promoted to higher environments, all right? Uh, we also implemented CICD. Uh, they had CICD for CloudUp, it was extended to automate deployments to RTF, okay? And uh, it also now supports external log forwarding to Sumologic via the CloudWatch feature. Uh, we implemented uh, monitoring, we leveraged the Danetris monitoring uh, to monitor the infrastructure for usage and uh, health check, right? A WAF and AWS Shield was enforced on the application load balancer to make the infrastructure more secure. So if you look at the tech stack in summary, it's AWS EKS, MuleSoft Runtime Fabric, Terraform, Sumo Logic and Danetris. Now what are the business benefits? Number one, obviously the integration layer was containerized as per their EA guidelines. The new architecture is more secure and compliant uh, with their standards. Uh, with self-managed Kubernetes, they have the flexibility to plan your, their Kubernetes upgrades without any dependency on Muse of releases, which is uh, yeah, which is good for them. Infrastructure deployment is completely automated, right? Eliminating any need for frequent manual intervention and significant optimization in the way their Muse of licenses were consumed. Okay. Lot of theory. Now let's see RTF in action. Heather will give us a quick demo of how to leverage a custom policy to uh, automatically distribute traffic to an API which is deployed on both Cloud Hub and RTF. Now that's a use case he has picked up for this session for you. Okay. Over to you, Heather. Hi, everyone. Wish you a great day. I am Heather Azam and I work as a technical architect in the exciting domain of integrations and middleware here at Royal Cyber. Thank you, Mir Mustafa. Next, let's go through our demo, which is about implementing Canary release solution for Cloud Hub to RTF migration. First of all, what's the advantage? A Canary release basically helps organizations to reduce the risks of introducing new versions of a software by incrementally rolling out traffic to the new version, improving the observability and limiting the impact of the new components over the existing service. So how this can be achieved? For a can release to exist, the following elements should be present. An old version of software, a REST API in this context of MuleSoft, a new version of API called the Canary version. There can be multiple Canaries. API consumers, they can be either the same type of consumers or different ones. A routing criteria, this can be based on the type of audience. For example, consumers of type A will be routed to the old version, while the consumers of type B will be Canary consumers or early adopters being redirected to the Canary version. Or based on traffic, that is, for example, 90% of the traffic will be sent to the previous version, while the remaining 10% will be redirected to the Canary version. A router, so this is the final component that on that on basis of the routing criteria redirects the traffic to the available endpoints. We are doing a demo here using MuleSoft custom API manager policy to perform canary releases that will intercept the incoming calls and decide which implementation URL to route the call to. As far as the deployment architecture is concerned, there is no limitation as such, except the need of having two artifacts or applications deployed in any point runtime manager. And in our case, a simple application is deployed to both CloudHub and RTF. So the first diagram that you are seeing on the left their proxy is deployed on top of both versions, original and canary, in order to centralize communication. And this also provides an abstraction and improves understanding from the point of view of networking and traffic management. It also provides a more flexible solution in terms of deprecation and retirement, and also improves the observability. However, if you want to skip the extra layer added by the proxy, of, uh, obviously because it will consume an extra core, you can always supply the policy on top of the original baseline application, and that is shown on the figure on the right side. So let's see this in action. 
let's first go through the runtime manager. If you go to the runtime fabric section, we can see here that we have an RTF instance. This is a appliance version. This is hosted in Royal Cyber. It has a controller and two nodes. If you go to the deployed applications, <clears throat> let me sort this. So these three are the basically the applications that we are concerned here. So first one is the Canary release proxy. This is deployed in Cloud Hub, consuming 0.1 Vco. Then we have the application deployed in Cloud Hub and the same application deployed to RTF. If we go to API Manager to see the custom policy that we have deployed, this is our can we release proxy. If you go to the policy section, let's view the configuration. We can see that it is basically working on the basis of weight, that is 70% of the traffic will be routed to the original application, and 30% of the tra traffic will be routed to the Canary endpoint. These are the endpoints of the original and Canary application. This is, so this is a Cloud Hub application, and this is the endpoint for the RTF application. You can see we haven't checked this option. For example, if you want that the proxy is deployed to the same original application, you can just check this option. Next, let's send few requests and see how it goes. Let's see for our cloud application. So this is the curl. This is a simple service. Just returning I am up from Cloud Hub. Let's see the RTF endpoint. Again, this is a simple service, the same service. And it is also returning I am up from RTF. And now let's see the Canary release proxy. So since we have different defined like 70 and 30 percent ratio, the first 70 percent traffic will go to Cloud Hub and then to RTF. This is six request went to Cloud Hub. One of the requests already we have we had tried, so that's why it went to RTF Cloud Hub. So the remaining three requests will go to RTF. And again, the cycle will continue and it will go to Cloud Hub. So that's what, that was all about demo. The solution provided here, and this can be customized to meet your needs. So this was all about the custom can release policy. Thank you all for being with us. Back to you, Mir. Thanks, Heather, uh, for the wonderful demo. It was very informative. Now it's time for some Q&A. All right, so that's all for today. Uh, I know it doesn't end here. Should you have more questions or need additional information, you can always reach us at uh, info at royalcyber.com uh, referencing this webinar, okay? Um, thanks again. Thanks for your time today. Uh, um, see you in the next webinar. Thank you, bye.